Welcome to Geek vs. Geek, where two nerds duke it out. It's kind of like a nasty, bloody mixed martial arts fight, but with just brains. We are here in Ehau's state-of-the-art tech center, a.k.a. Dave's basement. Let's meet our geek gladiators. Dave Johnson is editorial director for Ehau Tech and the author of three dozen books. Rick Broida writes for CNET, PC World, and Wired, and is the author of the new book, The Cheapskate Rules. Together, they are Ehau Tech's Geek vs. Geek. Let's get started. Before we get to the main event, let's check in with a gadget that's been getting a lot of buzz around town, but we're not sure if it's worth the money. We are calling this segment, Worth It? Today we're talking about a little gadget from Google that plugs into your TV, the Google Chromecast. Dave, what is this thing? Like you say, plugs into your TV. It turns any HD TV into a smart TV. So basically, I can watch Hulu Plus, I can watch Netflix, and the best part is, this little guy costs $35. Now, in my book, this could do nothing at all. And if it only costs 35 bucks, it's worth it. At $35, this is right up my alley because I love all things cheap. We do. And the problem is that it doesn't really turn your TV into a smart TV, more like a second grader. It just doesn't do that much. It gives you Netflix and YouTube, and more recently, they've added Hulu Plus to the capabilities, but that's really about it. Versus a Roku box, which gives you hundreds of channels of streaming of, of music and video and all sorts of good stuff. And how this much is does that cost? barely limited. That starts at forty nine bucks. So but, we're talking another fourteen dollars. But the Pro version costs like a hundred bucks. But, as does Apple TV, costs a hundred bucks. What does the Roku do that the Chromecast doesn't? Let's see. HBO Go, Pandora, got it. Got Spotify. It. Got it. How do you got all it? All of those things how do you got I it? can do on the Chromecast because anything you can display in a web browser you can send to the Chromecast. So Dave, do you need a computer, like an actual laptop, to run this thing? You can use any device that has a Chrome browser. So you can do it on your iPhone, on your Android device, on your iPad, on your laptop, any device works. That's a limitation as well, because out of the box, it doesn't even come with a remote. So you need to have a smartphone or a tablet or something like that just in order to operate this thing. Not everyone has a smartphone or a tablet. A Our Roku box comes with a remote. Boop, 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 boop for a lot more money. For $14 more. Here, I'm here. I'll tell you what. I am going to cover you right now. Okay. Here, go get yourself a Roku box. You are Wait. not getting this money back. <laughs> I think I deserve that. <laughs> to be sitting in between y'all, I think I deserve that money. All right, it's time for the main event. It is the battleground of ideas with only one rule here, no biting. Today's topic, laptops versus tablets. Have tablets gotten so good that you just don't need a laptop anymore? Dave, what do you think? Actually, we're really, really close. I'd say for most people, they can take a tablet like the iPad or Windows Surface or an Android device instead of a laptop and they'll never know the difference because for a few extra dollars, like here on my iPad, Fancy. you can get, yeah, this really awesome little keyboard that gets thrown on the top or if you get a Microsoft Surface, look at that. And it even has a kickstand kick <laughs> and you can type away. And then it becomes a tablet if you pull the keyboard off. That's pretty sharp. Rick, what do you think? <laughs> well, as much as I would love to be able to pack just a tablet when I travel, the reality is that it's just not there yet. For the type of writing that I do, the type of blogging that I do, the mobile browser Safari on the iPad cannot run the blog tools that I need it to run. If you are someone who needs to do a lot of photo editing, video editing, the power is not there, the apps are not there, you don't have a mouse for the very precise control that you need. And let's not forget too that most tablet screens are fairly small. So there's definitely some limitations here. Okay, I hear what you're saying. And what you're doing is making the argument for the 20% of people that have very special needs. Most people aren't blogging. What they need is Word, Excel, PowerPoint. They need to Facebook, go on. They need Twitter, Facebook, email, Angry the Birds. Essential things. Yeah, they need those things, and they need a browser. And all of that stuff is provided on any tablet that you can buy today, and you can do most of the things that you need. You mentioned uh, Office stuff, Word, Excel, and so forth. Well, Office proper does not exist for the iPad. Are there alternatives? Are there workarounds? Yes, there are. But Office as we know it, and as business users use it, does not exist. 
it will be arriving As for the iPad eventually. As of this moment in time that we're discussing it, it's not there. Okay, so basically what you're saying in a nutshell is that for the average layman who's not doing anything extensive work-wise, the tablets do work. But if you're a professional person who's doing a something a little more elaborate like video or photo editing or blogging as you do, it's not going to be enough. You do need an actual laptop. That is a perfect assessment. I, I agree as well. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and declare Helen the winner of this argument. Oh Yay! I've waited so long. <laughs> so it's the holidays next month and I know a lot of you are busy making your wish lists. Rick and Dave don't need wish lists because they already own every tech gadget under the sun. But guys, if you had to pick one thing that you really want as a gift for the holidays, what would it be? My one thing I would really like this year, and just to show what a nice guy I am, I'm giving it to you, Rick. Happy oh. holidays. For me? Yes. I don't want it. <laughs> you have to take what it. What is it? It is a Nokia Lumia 1020. It is a Windows phone. No, I definitely uh, don't want it. Phone. <laughs> You do have to contend with the fact that it's running the, the Windows Phone operating system, but actually notice this gargantuan camera on the back mm. of it. This is its selling point, and this really does make it awesome. For people that don't carry a camera with them anymore, all they do is take pictures with their phone, this is a 41 megapixel camera. Wow. That's right, 41 megapixels, it's amazing. If you're the kind of person that doesn't carry a camera anymore at all, and all you do is take pictures with your phone, this is the phone to own. Rick, what's your one thing that you really want for the holidays? Well, the one thing that I really want for the holidays, I'm going to give to Dave. Happy early Christmas, oh, Dave. Yay. That's all oh, love Is and it joy. a puppy? It's a puppy. So you've got the Moto X from Republic Wireless. The Moto X is kind of like the hot phone of the moment, the hot Android phone of the moment. Republic Wireless is an upstart service provider that has been offering for a long time now $19 a month service with the one or two phones that they've offered. Now, the phones that they've offered have not been real exciting. They've been kind of like old last year's models. The Moto X is like hot stuff. And so for Republic Wireless to be offering this phone and then on top of it, no contract, very inexpensive service is kind of a big deal. So if you're a commitment phobe with your phone, this is the thing to get. Yeah, so it's like your chance to get the phone of the moment without signing up for a two-year contract and the potential of a very low monthly rate. It's really quite amazing. And so my gift to you. Oh, that's a that's great deal. Very Thank you, Brett. Generous. <laughs> wow, those were such nice gifts. You guys didn't get me anything, though. Lame. What do you guys think of the show? We want to hear from you. So let us know on Facebook, Twitter, or email, and we will see you next time on Geek vs. Geek. Ah, <sighs> ah.